In this video, we'll explore how to find the x-intercepts of a function. To begin, let's look at a definition. The x-intercepts of a function are the points where the graph crosses the x-axis. Let's look at a common function. f of x equals x squared. We know that it looks something like this. We also know that the exponent on the x term, the 2, means that we'll have possibly two x-intercepts. Now let's see what happens when we move our graph over to our grid. In this case, the graph crosses the x-axis at, at 1 and 3, or the points 1, 0 and 3, 0. In this case, the graph crosses the x-axis at negative 2 and negative 1, or the points negative 2, 0 and negative 1, 0. In this case, the graph only touches the x-axis at one point, and that would be the point 0, 0. In this case, there is only one x-intercept. Sometimes, too, there may not be any x-intercepts. Remember, the exponent tells us that's the maximum number of intercepts that are possible. Here, our graph crosses the x-axis at 0 and at 2. Therefore, the x-intercepts are the points 0, 0 and 2, 0. You'll notice that along the x-axis, uh, the intercept is always when f of x equals 0. Let's finish off by looking at an example. Here we're asked to find the x-intercepts of the function 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. We call from earlier that the value of f of x is always equal to 0 for any intercept. So we can substitute into the equation here and say 0 must equal 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. In order to solve this equation, we will need to select an appropriate technique. One possible technique is to use trinomial factoring for the right side of the equation. Let's review that technique. First thing you do is try to find two terms that will multiply to give you the first term, the 2x squared. In our case, that would be 2x and 1x. Next, you try to find two terms that will multiply to give you the last term. Uh, one combination might be 2 and 1. And we can use a minus and a plus and see what happens. What you do is you then cross multiply. And when we do that, we find that we get 2x minus 2x, which when we add them up together gives us 0. You look at that value and you compare it to the middle term. If they're equal, then you've got the factors. In this case, however, it didn't work. That doesn't matter. We'll try again. Let's go back and find two terms that will give us that first term. Again, it would be 2x and 1x. And what about the last term? Well, in this case, we'll go 1 and 2, minus and plus. We'll cross multiply. Let's see what happens. We would get 4x minus 1x, which equals 3x. We look at that value, compare it to the middle term, and we know that we have identical terms. So we've got the factors. And in our case, the factors then would be this term and this term. Or 2x minus 1 times x plus 2. Note that if you find, after trying a number of different combinations, that nothing seems to work, try a different method. For example, try the quadratic formula. Now that we have the factors, let's go back and complete our example. So we know that 0 equals 2x minus 1 times x plus 2. Therefore, 2x minus 1 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. 
solving these equations, we would get 2x equals 1, or x equals 1 half, or x equals minus 2. Therefore, the x-intercepts are 1 half and negative 2, or the points 1 half, 0, and negative 2, 0.